No. No, I don't want Alice, this. I don't want any of this. I don't want you, you or this okay? house or this baby. I just. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And I know last Tuesday I just started a new series about recreating a film scene, and week number two, I'm already kind of breaking it. This past weekend has been filled with a 48 hour film festival that was for the Russo brothers. It was their very first one and it was a blast. So I'm exhausted. Uh, my gear is like everywhere and half my batteries were dead. So I couldn't do a proper setup just, to, I mean, it's literally 11 p.m. the night before as I'm starting to make this video. So I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of share my thoughts on why I think every creator should do a 48 hour film festival. I know there's a lot of creators who go into narrative work, a lot of creators who just do like, you know, tech or, or whatever YouTube videos, but I think a lot of lessons can be learned. If you're at all interested in cinematography or filmmaking in general, 48 hour film competitions are a blast. One, you get to just get a group of friends together who enjoy doing what they do best and trying to create something in 48 hours. And so I don't want to spend forever talking about 48 hour film festivals, how they work and all that. If you guys want to see a video like that, kind of a rundown, I shot a bunch of behind the scenes of this past one. So I don't know if you guys want to see that stuff, leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll make that video. But for this one, I want to stick to kind of the lessons I've learned from past filmmaking experiences that I was able to fix and implement for the short film that we shot here, as well as uh, mistakes that I made in this one that I kind of need to fix for the next one going forward. But anyway, let's kind of jump into it here. And I want to start with uh, my favorite shot of the entire film. This is kind of what I saw as our hero shot here. Technically, our final rundown was actually in black and white. Again, I'm not going to tell you the plot line of why that is. During editing through a rough cut, I kind of came up with this grade that uh, almost had a little bit more 70s vibe to it. I really dig it, but that's not the point of me bringing this up. Anytime you have a subject indoors and then you have windows behind it, that's automatic cause for a problem because what always happens, your subject is either really dark uh, to expose for outside or you expose for your subject and then the windows are completely blown out. And in my opinion, that is the fastest like boom amateur film unless there's a specific reason of why that is. Uh, and this was a overcast day, but I added this uh, gradient here just to simulate what it looked like. I don't have a shot of it before I turn the light on, but if you expose for outside, this is generally what you get. You get a underexposed subject. So what I always personally do whenever I set up my composition is I always just expose for the outside and then I use a key light to simply bring it back in. So this here, if I take off the vignette, that will also make it easier to tell. Uh, this simply is a Forza 500 kind of uh, behind me, back to my left here. Uh, if I'm the camera, then the light's right uh, offside here with my four by six foot just diffusion with about three feet in between so I could get an extra soft look and you can kind of see it reflecting in her eyes right there. And that was plenty to kind of fill her in while still remaining exposed for the outside. And then also on all of these clips, I'm using Dehancer Pro, which like the greatest film emulation pack ever. I'll leave it linked down in the description below, but if I just turn that off, uh, we get a gray like this, which is a little on the magenta side because it I compensated for it in the dehancer, but not bad, but it's a very clean image and we're going for a little bit more of a older period piece. And so by adding that in, uh, I was using the Fuji Chrome Velvia 100 film stock and you can see how much control over you have. Most film emulation stuff you have a couple sliders here and there basically for intensity purposes, but here you're controlling everything from uh, what you're actually inputting. So I'm able to put in uh, a specific camera so I can put my black magic, black 4K, same difference, um, and change it to the film look. I can do all that. I can change the film, the print, the color head, the film grain, halation, bloom, vignette, film brush, gateway, false color output, legend, all that stuff. Uh, I can put right into here and fully control 
and it's it's just incredible. But yeah, so the biggest lesson that I always learned in the past was if you're filming inside and you have windows in the background, always try and make sure that they're not blown out. It will look so much better. Also, for the record, this was shot on the Pocket 6K Pro, and I had the two stops ND, because uh, I wanted to get a decent separation, shallow depth of field, so I think I was at like f2.8 on my 15 millimeter uh, Sydney lens, same one that you're viewing right now. All right, let's move on to the next shot. All right, this shot right here hurts me so bad. We did probably 10 or 15 takes of this shot, and I'll play it through real quick so you guys can see what it looks like. We are on a 6K timeline with full color grade, so let me record a resolution the, uh, that. Dinner. All right, so we have the shot. This is all one continuous shot. We didn't want to break it up, and you can see where this is going. Basically, it just goes into blah, blah, blah. And we finally get focus here on the end. So this is one shot um, just on my Pocket 6K Pro with my Zion Crane 3S gimbal. I'm essentially slowly walking towards the actress. And the first four or five takes, I was pulling focus as well. And the hard part about cine lenses is they have a very long focus throw. And so while trying to keep perfect composition, steady walking, uh, I also was trying to uh, compensate basically first AD myself. And this was the closest take overall. And Oh boy, that was rough. So the other thing that we tried was to do it a little bit more professional, a little bit more proper. So I rigged up my Nucleus Nano and then basically on the other side of this door down the hall is where the director's viewfinder was. So I was transmitting the video signal wirelessly so that the director and producers could watch it. And I literally handed the producer the focus wheel, someone who has no first AD experience, so I kind of threw him right at it. So kudos to Joey for giving it A for effort. That way I could only focus on the walking and maintaining composition, and then he would only have to focus on focusing. But being a first AD is one of the most underappreciated roles in all of movies. Like they're so good that you definitely don't notice them when you watch movies. I mean, everyone probably just thinks that these Huge cameras have autofocus or something, but no, 30 or 45 minutes literally just trying to get this shot. So we had to move on and this was the best shot that we had. So what is the lesson learned here? If I was able to redo this shot tomorrow, I would lose the gimbal and I would set up my slider because I have extension poles for it for about nine feet or so. And that probably would have been enough. I don't think the rails would have gotten away uh, they would definitely be close to bottom of frame, but I think they would be okay. And so I would do a slider and then I would do more of, um, rather than a wireless, uh, motorized, uh, follow focus, the cheaper ones that like I have, they're like so quick that it's really hard to have precise focus to them. So I would just use like a, one of those regular hand crank ones. Uh, so as I'm sliding it, it would be perfectly symmetrical composition. I wouldn't have to worry about a gimbal drifting. And then also I would probably be able to nail focus better. So mm, missed opportunity there, but it's what it is. I'm curious, let me know down in the comments below, have you guys done a shot like this where it's like a really long take and you have to go from basically infinity focus to minimum focus very consistently and smoothly as you're following a subject? How hard was it? And uh, did you use autofocus? Because that probably would have been better. <laughs> this shot, I got 100% lazy on. There is no studio whatever lighting at all in this. This is how you completely, in my opinion, ruin the mood of a potentially good scene is this is literally just the uh, regular bathroom light flipped on over uh, the mirror here. Again, it doesn't look terrible, but normal house lighting is a bunch of little bulbs that throw off pretty ugly color contrast. Like if not all the bulbs are the same, then you can get mixed color temperatures. Uh, not to mention you just get this really like boring flat look 
Uh, I added in, of course, vignettes to add a little bit more dynamic look to it. Uh, you can see there. But for the most part, it's pretty ugly. You can see like her nose is like pretty harsh highlights, blah. And then on the wall, these really ugly shadows that get casted uh, from uh, regular house lights. It's just, mm, with how much work we put into this, um, like I keep coming back to my hero shop, I freaking love this scene. Um, with how much work we put into stuff like this, it's, you know, one of those things that you have to balance setup time and everything amongst the shots. And again, you have to write, shoot, edit, and publish this entire thing within 48 hours. So you feel the pressure, but you know, good to know for next time. Here's another really hard one uh, when it comes to lighting is, is planning according to the sun. Again, this is a 48, so it's a little bit different than um, films that I've worked on where we had weeks and months of planning ahead of time where we know, okay, on this shoot day, we're gonna do scene X, Y, and Z at this time frames because the sun or whatever is gonna be in this spot. Whereas we had one day to shoot and so it was kind of just like, all right, we start at the beginning of the day and we kind of just go for it. But we probably could have planned a little bit better in the morning to say, okay, we need this shot, this shot, and this shot around the same time frame, so that way the sun doesn't change too much. Because over here on the left-hand side, um, as you saw in, again, this clip, this entire wall, there's a window here, there's one to the left, there's like four more down the row. So that basically was, naturally lighting most of the room. And what happened was, is we shot this was one of our first shots. And so we had my big Forza 500 shooting through the diffusion, as well as a ton of natural sunlight. This one we shot about four hours later. And again, in the final piece, I color graded them to match more in the black and white. This was like rough cut V2 or something but you can see naturally how much less light it is. I happen to like this dynamic lighting a little bit more better than kind of the super bright, but again, style of the film was uh, more this. So pay attention to the times that you're shooting. The director is gonna be mad at me if he ever sees this, sorry, Ian, uh, but I just had to show at least one shot from one of the scenes because I love it. Uh, this is also proof that if you're going for like, you know, especially a futuristic look like we were going for here, it doesn't take crazy complex setups. This entire scene here was lit using three of these tubes. We have one four foot one, a two foot one, that's kind of split the difference between them, tried to use him to cover the gap. And then I had a second one set to a more, I think it was like 5600K uh, to give friendlier, warmer skin tones literally just on top, no bouncing, no extra diffusion, no nothing, and that's it. And I don't know about you, but I freaking love this look. Of course, the Dream Effects filter helps because it creates this cool like halo effect, uh, definitely stylized, but I'm a fan. And finally, the last uh, kind of tip or thing I wanna talk about in this video that I am so happy that I finally, finally got the hang of is coverage. I have complained about me not being good at getting coverage so many times, it's crazy. And so I finally made sure to focus on that for this. Coverage is essentially, if there's an action going on, in this case, uh, she goes from this room, she walks down the hall and into the kitchen. On past shoots, I would film you know, in each room. So I'd get her walking here, I'd get her walking in the hallway and then going into the kitchen. But I wouldn't get as many angles or variations as I should. So then you have to, you know, you don't have many options during an edit and that most of the time leads to a very amateur looking film. And so I made sure to get different variations. We went up on the stairs. And so I got uh, literally like um, held off the gimbal uh, off to the side here and then shot from down below. Now you can see where I was holding the gimbal, kind of in the bonus room up there. Uh, so I got there. And then I also got walking down the hall as well as 
ignore the not filled frame. Um, I guess I cut it before this, but I got her walking in from this view. And like this top view, I filmed like a dozen different ways. This was another take uh, filmed from this angle for this shot. So just a little bit different variety. And that helped so much. I was able to change angles and the shot changes in this film, like every, I don't know, three to four seconds, unless it's, you know, a specific shot that's supposed to hang for longer, uh, rather than just a long, boring, like tripod pan of someone walking for 10 seconds for no apparent reason. It's not just coverage of actions, but it's also the other random things on set. So uh, this guy was kind of uh, tugging at the door with some cooking mittens, so I made sure to get a close-up of his hand uh, right there, as well as took out some cookies, and I don't have it in this uh, cut, but in the final cut, I had a close-up of the cookies. So make sure that you get coverage, you get shots from as much as you can. Um, there is even a handful of shots that, like, we didn't call action for, but I just saw where, like, he was playing around with the cookies on the baking sheet, so I just rolled for a couple seconds just to have, and we ended up using a couple clips that weren't intended to be used in the film, but they were just some extra moments that happened to work into the cut, and it looks really good. So I'm really curious, as creators, what is the biggest thing that you are working on? Is it getting better focus, better lighting, better coverage? Whatever it is, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to hear what other people are doing to fix their problems, as well as if you want my advice or help or anything, let me know. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.